the 80s had an infatuation with little creatures, some cute, some not so cute. In 1984, director Joe Dante teased the world with their upcoming movie. I mean, look at this poster. We were dying to know what it was about. The paws, the eyes look cute, but the title was a little sinister. This is Gremlins. Let me introduce myself. Peltzer's the name, Rand Peltzer. Meet Randall Peltzer, played by Hoyt Axton, a down-on-his-luck inventor and our narrator. This is your grandfather's store? Yeah. Come on. Bring out the gimp. Let's see. Bong, bong, pipe, bong. It's the invention of the century, friends. It eliminates the, the need to carry heavy luggage and things when you travel. Okay, he's no Ron Pompeo. You got yourself your toothbrush, you got yourself a toothpick, you got toenail clippers. That sounds stupid. You take your toothbrush out, and you push this button. Shut up and take my money. But something gets his attention. What is that? Why, that's the audience, silly. Mr. Wing, the owner played by Key Luke, says it's not for sale. But the family needs the money, so the grandson sells it to him on the DL. And now the rules. Keep him out of the light. Don't get him wet. Never, never feed him after midnight. No feeding after wet, keep out of midnight, and never get him light. Got it. Now is that midnight locally, Greenwich Mean Time? Does it take daylight savings into account? I'm thinking too hard again, aren't I? Back home, meet Randall's son, Billy, an aspiring comic strip creator. Hey, Billy, what's the matter? You need a jump? <laughs> not yet. Phoebe Cates isn't here yet. I expect to see you in the funnies any day now with Smiling Jack and Little Abner. Oh, well, Mr. Futterman, they don't run those comics anymore. They don't. See that? Billy just destroyed that old man. Looks like someone made movies named after the original titles of E.T. Nice little homage there. Billy works at the bank with Katie, played by Phoebe Cates. Billy also takes his dog to work. Does it mean I can take my new kitten to work? Not long before we meet Mrs. Deagle, played by Polly Holiday. She's a mean lady, but she lives through the film. Good morning, Mrs. Deagle. What's good about it? Oh. See, she'll be okay. Suddenly, I want Jack in a Box tacos. I want your dog. You will all kiss her grits. I'll take him to the kennel. It'll be quick and painless compared to what I could do to him. Okay, I get it. We're supposed to hate her. I forgot Judge Reinhold was in this. Together again. Just knock next time. But Dad comes home with a surprise. The wind-up, the pitch, and the reveal. It's a Furby. It's not a Furby. Oh my god, I wanted one of these when I was a kid. The rules once again. Number one, he hates bright lights. We know that. Number two, keep him away from water. Don't ever feed him after midnight. But isn't it always after midnight? Does it reset at breakfast? I know I'll stop. They name him Gizmo, because the dad's an inventor, and of course they do. They become lifelong buds. In other words, he's had him a day, and he already broke him. You better lock your doors, or Triffids will just waltz right in. Here's Corey Feldman. He plays Pete, and he's pining for a bigger role. He wants to branch out. I think he would like something to drink. I'm out of tree puns. Cute. <laughs> they spill water on him, and Gizmo explodes with things that look like chicken McNuggets left out in the rain. Turns out this is how they reproduce. I mean, don't you think this is, this is incredible? It really is me. Jeez, kid sure is hard to impress. I blame television. You should be sad. How will you support them without a job? Among the new guys is an obvious adversary. They name him Stray. Tell me this isn't evil. Now you're familiar with the bathroom buddy, right? Uh -huh. I have made an improvement. Let's say you're late for your bris. Stick your dick in there, foreskin pops out here. Stop trying to make your dog hang the Christmas lights. That's a cat's job. Didn't Homer Simpson invent that? When a scientist isn't available, the local high school science teacher is always here to answer your science questions and probably get killed doing so. It's kind of a dick move demonstrating that when it looks like it obviously hurts. Now this takes place entirely off screen, 
Sure, it saves on special effects, and we've seen it already. But this lets us focus on his reaction. It gives our actors a chance to, you know, act. Ah, gremlins. We also learn Katie hates Christmas. Say you hate Christmas, and everybody makes you feel like you're a leper or something. We find out why later. The science teacher runs some tests while acting very creepy. He also leaves food out. Billy feeds the new mogwai, and now I want fried chicken. You done fucked up, son. It's actually a trick to get food after midnight. See, they can't get food by themselves, but apparently basic wiring is easy peasy. Now, is it just eating after midnight? What about digestion after midnight? Does that count? Nobody's asking these questions! But what they eat, they turn into these. Paging Dr. Kafka. Quick check in on Miss Deagle. Where's that psychotic canine of yours? He's in for slow death. Yep, still a bitch. The cocoons start hatching, including the one with the science teacher. Hey there. Why does he sound like he's offering him a Colt 45? I got you a candy bar. You're gonna need more than a Snickers. <laughs> I guess Snickers does satisfy. Billy finds the teacher and his ass is dead. Uh, gremlins. But it also turns out Billy's mom is kind of a badass and she takes out three of the creatures in her kitchen. Death by KitchenAid, a good old stabbing, and exploding them in the microwave. Contents are hot, motherfucker! I'm going to ask a big question that you're all afraid to. How do they taste? I mean, you have a self-renewing food supply right there. I know it's a dark topic. I still want to know. Uh, gremlins. <laughs> see? Triffids. Stripe is the last survivor. Let's see what kind of trouble he can get into. Don't worry, Gizmo's okay. Well, Stripe is on the loose, but Billy tracks him to a YMCA. Into the pool with what looks like 50 pounds of dry ice. This cannot end well. Uh, gremlins. Of course the police are useless, and it's not long before the town is overrun. And the big moment, Mrs. Deagle is attacked by the gremlins, and she goes for a ride. And the body count continues to rise. Meanwhile, Kate is trapped in a psychotic Muppet skit. I'm not sure they're old enough to drink. Although slightly dated, I still can't help but be impressed by the scale of the puppetry here. Even the dated pop culture references are still hilarious. If you remember what they're referencing, and I'm old enough to remember what they're referencing. Now it's Billy to the rescue. And we find out why Kate hates Christmas. It was Christmas Eve. I was nine years old. Her father disappeared on Christmas Eve. Christmas Day came and went, and still nothing. But... The house was freezing, so I went to try to light up the fire. Here it comes. The fireman came and broke through the chimney top, and instead they pulled out my father. <laughs> he was dressed in a Santa Claus suit. He slipped and broke his neck, he died instantly. Gizmo's reaction is appropriate. I mean, Jesus Christ! Suddenly, the streets are eerie and quiet. That's because the gremlins have gathered to watch Snow White in the movie theater. <coughs> they create a gas leak and destroy the building, killing all the gremlins inside. <laughs> Except for Stripe, who is once again the only survivor. And they have their final battle in a department store. Now a deadly game of cat and mouse. Hey, uh, your Spielberg is showing. While trying to turn on the lights, Kate switches on a fountain display. Oh, that is so freaking adorable. When the lights come on, Stripe finds the fountain and would rather taunt Billy with a gun than jump right in. I'm sure if he could speak more, he'd be monologuing at this point. Oh, here we go. But Gizmo to the rescue, and Stripe is destroyed. <laughs> Mr. Wing comes by and takes Gizmo back because we're not ready for such cuteness. You are not ready. 
With great mogwai comes great responsibility. Yeah, we get it. You don't deserve a mogwai. That was Gremlins. The tone shifts from funny to horrific and back again. The Gremlins are murderous sociopaths that also perform cute skits and characters as a parody of people and society in general. Billy was a good, likable character, and Phoebe Cates has her legendary Santa Claus monologue. Classic. But ultimately, the humans are a bit on the bland side when compared to Gizmo. I mean, come on, this is the real star here. For a puppet, he had a lot of character. You really started to feel for the little guy. Polly Holiday is like Mr. Potter, Ebenezer Scrooge, and Cruella de Vil rolled into one. She provides a human antagonist for our characters, but ultimately she's a ready-made victim for the gremlins. Let's watch her die in a somewhat comedic, over-the-top way. Yay, Christmas! There's something about puppets that CG still can't quite touch. Even if they look like puppets, at least they look like they're physically there. The actors are reacting to a physical item, and it I think it takes more skill to maintain that illusion. A lot of the creature movement takes place just off camera, with some skillful staging, camera work, and editing to make the transition seamless. Kate and Billy do have chemistry together, and they do make a cute couple. I never doubted for a second they would wind up together. There is a message in all this, and it's pretty heavy-handed. You do with Mokwai what your society has done with all of nature's gifts. I said it was heavy-handed. I didn't say it was wrong. The effects may seem dated by today's standards, but if you're a puppetry fan like me, it's impressive enough to suspend your disbelief. I actually buy that this is a real creature. I mean, look at him. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and subscribe. That's all I want for Christmas. Do you think you could handle a mogwai? I mean, not mess up any of the rules or anything. Do you think you have what it takes to raise one? Leave a comment below. This is The Newbie, and as always, thanks for watching. And remember, if your washing machine suddenly explodes, if your vacuum catches fire, if your camera suddenly cuts